for joining us. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, decentralizing retail today. Um, and probably one of the most important things is how do we identify the user and put data in the hands of users in a way that's actually useful, not just for the user, but also for the retail economy. Uh, a little bit about our product. Um, we actually have 719,000 users from two 30-day pilots with uh, major retailers. Uh, we are the winners of BTC Miami, uh, the North American blockchain conference, the largest one in the world, as well as Coin Agenda. And what we do is we're building a universal shopper profile where we work with retailers to give you three to five years of your purchase data, that you're in control and have total visibility of your data, and you can use it to shape personalization across the web in a way that's never been done before, as well as a cryptocurrency for retailers to then pay you to receive the adverts, since this is the best data set to target you with, and then for you to spend that within the retail economy. We live in a really strange time. The brands that we love are going out of business. We've all heard of Toys R Us, American Apparel, all kinds of other brands are going out of business. And the big question we've got to ask is why? Whilst e-commerce is a massive opportunity, only 7% of retailers can identify their user across multiple channels and devices. 85% of retailers are inconsistent with their messaging across devices. If I don't know who you are as a customer, how will I provide you the experiences that you deserve or be able to convert you into a sale? Makes no sense. And I'll give you a good example of how this actually plays out in the real world. Imagine that you go to Nike.com and you look at 20 different items. And then you go over to Adidas.com and you go and buy a pair of pants. What's wrong with this? Well, because they don't know who you are, for 30 days you'll be tracked by, by cookies and pixel tracking and you will receive adverts for 20 different items that are totally irrelevant to you. Now that's frustrating for me as a user, seeing all these adverts. It's an assault on my senses. Secondly, my data is being sold and peddled, and I'm not the financial, financial beneficiary of it, nor do I get the personalization I want. The retailer is spending money, and where does it go to? It makes Facebook, Google, and all kind of ad exchanges really rich, and it makes me no richer, no poor, uh, just poorer, and also the retail economy gets poorer. And of course, Adidas and Nike don't share purchase data, the most important thing they should be sharing, because they're enemies. So when you go buy something at, at Adidas, they don't tell Nike that, you, that a purchase was made. It's not a very healthy scenario. Even worse than this, we have GDPR compliance, which is a great thing. You know? Who knows what GDPR compliance is here, by the way? GDPR compliance is a data protection act that got passed two years ago in Europe. And it affects anybody who is selling to a European customer. It doesn't matter if, you're, if they're in America, Timbuktu, you're selling to this customer, then they're European, you're going to fall under these laws. And they state that the user is the owner of their data. It's a very exciting thing for us as consumers. And if you ask for your data back, you have to, they have to give it to you in a downloadable, discernible, and shareable format. They also have to offer data deletion, not just from themselves, but from their partners in a full audit on what they did with your data. Now, I don't know if you've been watching what's been happening with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. Your data is being bought and sold and peddled and you're not the beneficiary. That has to change. The other side of that is they're being assaulted by a formidable foe. And what they've built at Amazon is this incredible uh, purchase data ecosystem where all the retailers actually do, in a way, talk to themselves. And if these are all the retailers and this is the user, this is the purchase data ecosystem. They know exactly what you buy at every single one of the uh, other retailers. And they target to you, and they give you incredible experiences within Amazon that are amazing, so amazing that 46% of the world's e-commerce today is driven by Amazon. But here's the interesting point. 30% of, e uh, of Amazon's e uh, uh, revenue is coming from the product recommendation bar, which is driven by, pr uh, purchase, uh, by uh, purchase history. That means that 15% of the world is being, uh, world's e-commerce is being driven by purchase history from the product recommendation bar of Amazon. How do we give that to the world? Well, what we do is we use artificial intelligence-driven games on retailers' websites that we provide to quickly understand the user. And also, we, have the, we supply the one thing that doesn't exist right now, which is that we collect all the purchase data from the last three to five years from all the different retailers and give it to you, the user. How does this play out? Well, what we do is that we work with a retailer, let's say Xenia, and Xenia will send an email to their, to their customers and say, you're going to get the most personal uh, experience, you're going to get <clears throat> financial rewards and deals the way you've never had before, and you'll control your data. The user signs up, 
They play a little game on the site of, the, of Xenia to understand them better, but most importantly, Xenia gives you three to five years of your purchase data with all the SKU level identifiers, so we know what that means. And we create an enhanced profile. From that point, we then reach out to all the other retailers in our network, and we suck in three to five years of purchase data from them. And this network is live. So if you buy something from one retailer, your profile updates, and thus the whole of retail and all other product recommendations we're running on all other sites and emails and other places all update in a complementary way. The best part of all of this is that we've built a decentralized and distributed artificial intelligence. And what it does is it sits between the just for you page where we supply these recommendations on the retailer, and it keeps your data safe. It only supplies the product recommendations based on the real-time inventory data that the retailer has by comparing it to your data, and no longer you're handing your data over to the retailer to be bought and sold and peddled and do whatever they want to do with it. So what does that look like? It's always great to see a product in action. So here you see us installed on Jay Lindenberg's page. The user goes to the Just For You tab, clicks on it. I'm going to log in with Shopin. Uh, supply some of, my, inform uh, some of inf my information. And here you'll see this is actually my profile in action, skinny jeans, all these kind of things. But these are not me, right? So what we do is 20% of what we supply for is called surprise and delight. And our AI supplies recommendations that are diametrically opposed to what you've purchased in the past or new fashions and new seasons. You can also remove items that you don't like, and your profile becomes more intelligent, and thus the whole web becomes more intelligent, not just one site. I go to buy an item, the price is based on what I spend on average in other places, my size of my jeans is pre-populated, I click checkout, it pulls my data from my, uh, from my central profile, I check out with shopping, and I've got one click uh, checkout on every single website. You never have to fill out another form. I'm not sure if you realize that $1.4 trillion is lost in, mo in, in shopping cart abandonment every year because of nonsense like filling out forms. Who are we? Um, I've built and sold three businesses before uh, in the tech and design space. But the real stars of our team are people like Devaka Rayapati. How do we build something like a protocol to understand the user in this kind of scale? Well, Devaka was the first engineering hire and principal programmer at Priceline for 14 years. Priceline today is a, uh, is a $100 billion company. And uh, working with him is the VP of uh, engineering of Priceline as well as the lead engineer of Priceline uh, for 10 years. Um, our Jeremy, our blockchain technology officer, my good friend of 25 years, who helped us to create our solution for a side chain on Ethereum that allows you to run transactions at a million transactions per second in a public, permissioned, and federated uh, a, a blockchain. And we'll be making that technology available for free for everyone else to develop around, much like Facebook had to develop Cassandra to scale, or Ada, uh, Amazon had to develop AWS. We're doing the same. We're just going to give the solution for free to everybody. Um, how do we get to the retailers? Well, uh, Michael, our CRO, used to be the um, president of global sales for Eli Tahari and the managing director of Donna Karen and DKNY, and also the SVP at Valentino. We understand retail. It's in our blood. And of course, joined with me today is my colleague and good friend, uh, Doron, who was the CMO of Lodomy, the managing director of Mindshare, um, and uh, CMO of IAB, amongst many other companies. We're also supported by some amazing uh, um, advisors. And by the way, the majority of our advisors are actually investors or participants inside our token sale. So they're highly invested in seeing us all the way through here. That includes Tom Gonser, the founder of DocuSign. I'm sure all of us have used DocuSign at some stage. And Amadeo, who is not only invested in over 120 startups, but he's also his family owns the biggest Dutch retailer in Europe. We have 719,000 users from 230-day pilots. But what's really amazing is that when people see these product recommendations, instead of 100 people shopping, 122 people on average shop. We tested with Xenia, a high-end men's suiting brand. A million people received the email from Xenia, and 130 people joined in 30 days. 130,000 people joined in 30 days. 5,300 came back to the Just For You page on their site, where we serve these aggregated um, product recommendations. And there was an increase of 21.8% increase in transactional conversion. We didn't believe these numbers, so we went over to test it in another vertical, which is middle America instead of high end, um, with uh, uh, <clears throat> specifically focused on uh, furniture and home goods. And we saw that 500,000 people out of 4 million people who received the email joined. 
And out of that, 86,000 people um, sh uh, shopped on Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, generating $13 million of revenue. And that was a 22% increase in transaction. We also saw a very interesting viral network effect that we had built in that 72,000 users onboarded 65,000 other users. And we do this because we allow you to share your profile with friends and family. So when it comes to gifting, you're able to get seamless kind of gifting by them switching on your lens, looking at the world of gifting through your profile's eyes, and buying you the things that are in your size, your style, and uh, in your fit. You shouldn't be surprised by these numbers, really. 88% of users want to have a more personalized experience based on having their data leveraged. So we had to build this on the blockchain because there's no ways that you can build a data set like this. I mean, nothing exists like this, a, a, a cross-correlated purchase data set like this. You had to build this on the blockchain because you can't have a honeypot of data waiting to be hacked. It was the first reason that retailers didn't want to, wouldn't want to do this kind of a solution. I mean, you've seen how Yahoo got hacked and all these people got hacked. So the blockchain saved us from that. And then the other part, of course, is that retailers don't want to share their purchase data with one another. But because of the way that our artificial intelligence works, your data never gets handed over to a retailer. They never get to see what the history of your, of your purchasing is. They live in a Nirvana-like state of showing the right product recommendations through our artificial intelligence by, having the, by essentially having all this data handled by the AI. And we had to solve some really big problems with Ethereum. Um, not that we've solved the actual problems in Ethereum itself with Ethereum, but we had to basically build a side chain in order to facilitate a million transactions per second, which is Visa level. And the great thing is that all your data is stored on a federation of nodes. Retailers run the nodes, and then your data is distributed among all, the, all these nodes. But also because our AI is distributed, the more retailers we have, the more computing power we have. And that means that we have several AIs essentially dealing with your data at any point in time. So even the artificial intelligence itself when it's dealing with your data can't be hacked. How do we charge? A really simple model. We charge like any other behavioral marketing company. The more you call the data, the more that we charge you. We'll have our product ready about the end of August, um, ready to be shipped into our first retail customer. And we're quite far ahead of the game. We have, the, we have agreements uh, per, uh, coming into play with, um, with private equity companies that are, own 80 retail brands in certain regions. So um, we're really ready to scale in a very large way. Um, we're also measuring some interesting things that have never been able to be measured before. For example, we've constantly been addicted to the lifetime revenue, uh, to, to the uh, um, LTV equation, right? Lifetime value of the cust uh, customer versus the CAC equation. But that's not a great equation because it's only focused on one website generally. But we're measuring your purchase history, your new love purchase history, your conversions, whether you're buying Givenchy or Louis Vuitton. Are you buying at full price or are you buying at part price? We're measuring something new, the lifetime margin of the customer, the real thing that you really want to know about the customer. Because when you measure this, you can build an ad exchange that delivers ads to the users in their own profile and pay the users, because why do you want to pay these people for sucking money out of the economy of the only two people who should be having the conversation of engagement? It should be between the retailer and the user. No one else deserves to be there. We give all the revenue, all the advertising revenue over to you, the user, so that you can come and spend it inside the world of retail. Retailer wants more users? Don't uh, advertise for the users. Ask the users that you have, the powerful advocates, to refer friends. They refer friends, those people come and join, pay them with shopping tokens. And then you can come spend those shopping tokens in the world of retail, where you face a high level of personalization from our engine based on your data, which was what was used to target you in the first place. And then you have a real um, economy of personalization and of finance. How are we going to hack getting the, the tokens to the users? This is one of the biggest questions utility tokens do not answer. We, we had to really rack our brains about this, and thanks to some of our advisors uh, along the path, we came to a solution that I believe is fairly elegant and egalitarian. We're going to take half of the revenue that we get from the retailers in the first year for behavioral marketing, which is rightfully our revenue, and we're going to purchase the tokens directly from the exchange and give it to the retailer for free. So if they're paying us a million dollars in their first year of business, we're going to take half a million of that revenue, which is rightfully ours, and we're going to give it to them in shopping tokens with the condition they have to hold on to them for six months and they have to circulate them to the utility holders, the users, by sending them adverts, not giving it to them for free or airdropping them or anything like that. Pay them 
to access the, to, to deliver ads, and then they come in and they spend them with you. And we start to create that circulation and less liquidity out of the markets, which we hope has positive effects for everybody. We're issuing 1.5 billion tokens. A third are kept for the company, um, which are under, and the advisors and the early stage investors. Those are on a three-year lockup and a smart contract. We can't touch them. Okay, every year, a third gets unlocked based on hitting product milestones. So we keep ourselves honest. Then a third is for deal making, for retailer incentives, loyalty distribution, user gifting. A large part of that's going to be actually held in reserve for, uh, for 24 months for a secondary offering. So we can't in any way affect the market and the market feels secure. And a third is being sold in our token sale. I'm really proud to announce that um, we won, when we won BTC Miami, we actually so, um, sold out of our private pre-sale uh, in less than 48 hours um, and were four times oversubscribed. And right now we are um, well over 65% through our token sale. Um, I think by Friday we'll be at over 70%. Um, and if you actually go to our site, it's remarkable. Despite the economy, every few seconds you can actually see live people uh, requesting participation and whitelisting themselves from everywhere from Japan to Russia to you name it. Um, we have chosen to exclude American uh, investors part or participants for the moment until the SEC has decided to give clear regulation, uh, around, especially around utility tokens. And what's really interesting about being here today is that the ma majority of our participation has come from Asia. Uh, we never really knew it would play out that way, but Asia has uh, swung, uh, swung open its doors, especially here in Hong Kong and in Korea, in ways that we never expected. We've been approached by everybody, everybody from LG CNS to Kakao Pay, because think about people like that who have 3,000 retailers and are looking for a new product to sell, and they have 20 million customers, but they have data, data storage issues. With this, you give the data back to the user. Nobody actually has to have to deal with holding the data anymore the most onerous thing that they have to deal with. And then on top of that, um, if we're more successful, then they essentially process more payments because you have less shopping cart abandonment and you have higher conversions. So <clears throat> if you would like to speak to me a little bit about our token sale, it's not really why I'm here to discuss, what I'm here to discuss on stage today. I'll be here. Please catch me afterwards. Um, but what we're here to really usher in is a new protocol for understanding the user. And what's really interesting is that we couldn't have actually not achieved this in a pre-blockchain state. We, know, we tried, by the way, because of the same issues again and again. And it all comes down to one simple thing. We all know in our heart of hearts, no matter who we are, whether you, rise, whether you own an ad exchange or whether you have shares in Facebook, we all know one simple truth. We all want our data. And we all want to own it, and we all deserve to own it, and it's ours. And it shouldn't be peddled around. It shouldn't be sold. But it's not enough to just give a person their data. You have to give them an economy of personalization and an economy of finance that makes sense. And that's our mission. And thank you very much for listening to me today.